You are a developer with style, and just like how you choose to style your appearance, you also like to choose how you style your dev tools. You can do just that with your very own VS Code color theme. Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? Put that down. Hello. I'm gonna show you how you can go from this to this, or whatever fits your style. The first thing you need to do is get yourself some Yeoman and the VS Code extension generator. These tools will help you jumpstart building out your initial theme. So to get started with Yeoman and the generator code tool, you need NPM and Node installed on your machine or in your code space, like how I'm using it. And the way you can do that is one, you can install it globally like they suggest here, but I personally don't like that. I'd rather use the NPX approach, which just temporarily installs those tools and you can step through everything right in that one shot and then be done with it. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna bring it over into VS Code. Paste it in, you hit enter. You're good to go. Now what that's doing is it's going to get Yeoman set up temporarily in this session of your terminal and the generator code tooling that plugs into Yeoman. I'm gonna ask you if you wanna proceed, you hit enter to go yes, it does its thing. Once that's done, you're gonna get prompted with a bunch of questions. And basically what you wanna do here is answer the questions following exactly how I do it here. We don't wanna create a new extension, we wanna create a new color theme. So we arrow down to that and press enter. Then it's gonna say, do you wanna import or convert an existing TextMate color theme. I'm gonna say no, start fresh for now, but if you're familiar with that type of thing, you have an existing theme that you wanna build off of that somebody else has out there, you can take that approach if you'd like. What's the name of your extension? Choose a name for it. What's the identifier of it? You can leave the default that's built off of based on the name that you chose. So I'm gonna go with that, or you can modify it. The description. the name that will be shown for the theme to the user. And I'm gonna explain how these show up for an end user. I'll, go, I'll show you what that looks like so you can understand how these correlate to each setting that you're choosing here. So you can just say whatever you want that to be. I like dark theme, but whatever you want it to be, you can choose between dark, light, high contrast, light contrast. Do you wanna initialize a Git repository? I'm gonna choose no in this case. And I'm gonna skip opening it with code for now because I already have an extension that I generated in this case. All right, now you're ready to start making your theme. What you'll want to do from here is run the extension so you can see the output of the theme color changes immediately as you make them. Let me show you how to do that now. All right, so after you ran those commands in the terminal and you choose to open it in Visual Studio Code, which I recommend doing it that way, you'll be able to start running it immediately if you'd like because of the Yeoman Generator tool that scaffolded out the entire theme extension for you. You can bring that up, you can start running it rather by clicking on this icon, the run and debug icon, Make sure it's selecting the extension option and press play or press the F5 key on your keyboard. And then what that will do is open up what's called the extension development host. Let me make this bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. Right at the top of the title bar there, it says that type of thing. And that way you know the difference between your instance that you're using to modify the theme extension and the one that's the output of your theme extension. And this is the output of my sneak patch purple theme that I've been working on you can see here, it actually activates that theme right away so I can see the changes that I make in my actual extension. Before you go further in creating a theme extension, you should know about the potential for vulnerabilities that are found in VS Code extensions you already use today. You can discover the hidden security risks in your extensions through Sneak's insightful blog posts that we have. You'll learn about the vulnerabilities in the VS Code extensions marketplace, followed by a detailed analysis of specific security flaws. What's even more interesting is Sneak detected the security vulnerabilities in the extensions mentioned. So if developers were using Sneak, then these security vulnerabilities wouldn't have happened in the first place. Stay informed and protect your coding environment by reading these essential guides today. Links are in the description below. Now that it's running and we can see the output of the theme, we can start choosing colors for it. At first, it's not going to look like much probably for you or any different from the default theme because you haven't changed anything. Let's get familiar with the structure of a theme extension to start setting its colors. All right, to first get familiar with this and see what the VS Code Yeoman Generator scaffolded out for you when it comes to this type of extension is all the files here. One in particular, package JSON, which is critical for any VS Code extension because it defines how that extension will behave, the type of extension it is, and what it contributes to the user's VS Code instance. And then specific to themes is going to be this themes folder, which has a JSON file that's named after your theme extension color. Or the name that you gave it. And in there, it defines the different colors that you want to apply to the different UI components, the syntax of the code. We're gonna dive into that type of stuff next at the moment. But let's take a look at the package JSON a little bit further. 
the name here at the top that is in this case i have sneak patch purple with hyphens in there that is going to be the identifier which results in your publisher id which you can find out more about that in this next video that we have after this about publishing VS Code extensions, and then the identifier, which is the name here. So it would be, for me, it's clarkio.sneakpatchpurple. That will be up in the marketplace to give it an ID in the marketplace, a unique ID, that is. Then display name. What does this correlate to when it comes to a VS Code theme extension? Well, this is what is displayed in the text slash title of the theme in the marketplace when people are searching and looking at other themes there. Moving on. It contributes. I mentioned that before. This tells VS Code that this type of extension is a theme extension and how to utilize that extension. What's the label for it in, in the sense of when somebody is switching themes inside of the command palette like this, what would be the name for it in this case? Sneaks Patch Purple. You can see how that matches up right here. So that's how that label gets propagated to the user. You tell it what type of theme it is, whether it's a dark theme, light theme, high contrast, and then the path to the JSON file that defines the colors to use for that theme, which is right there. So you can customize that if you'd like, but this is the default. Speaking of the themes folder, let's go check out that JSON file one more time. And in here, what gets scaffolded out for you immediately is gonna be the colors object and token colors. Now, for the most part, we're gonna dive into the colors object, the token colors we're gonna briefly touch upon later in the video here. but. This is where you set different things, like what's the foreground in all of VS Code? What's the background for a scroll bar and all these different things. And we're gonna get into how do you identify these different UI components to style them the way you wanna style them. So at this point, we can start customizing the theme. And the best way to jumpstart that is with a tool called themes.vscode.one. Link will be in the description below to check it out as well. But this will greatly speed up creating the theme just the way you want it. All right, so again, you go to themes.vscode.one is the website. And in here, you can browse existing themes, but if you want to start creating your own, you need to create an account. I created one called Clarkio. Once you have an account with them that's for free, all of it is for free, by the way, um, you can either look at existing themes and fork them and start building off of those if you'd like, or create a completely new one. And that's what I did for this sneak patch purple. Once you do that, you'll be able to start editing it here. Now, this is why this tool is fantastic to give you a jump start. When you try to create a theme without this tool, you're busy trying to figure out what UI piece you're trying to color in each point in time. What's the right setting in that JSON file that you need to put in and then give it the color that you want. And a lot of times you set that to red to do trial and error and you're going back and forth. This greatly speeds up that workflow, that loop. And the reason why is it breaks it out into colors for the general UI, the editor when within, these are editors, by the way, each tab is an editor of text file, by the way, and then the syntax, if you like. And then what you can do is once you're done with that, you can actually export it, you save it, you come back here and you say download, and that'll give you a JSON file that you can just plug into the themes folder back in VS Code. But let's step through a little bit more just so you can get a bit familiar with this. What's really nice about this is as you hover over each option to color, it pops up different visuals to see what that correlates to. Like you could see that, right? Like focus border, when I highlight that, it shows like the focus border of these types of components here. But a more obvious one is probably like notifications. And in the bottom right hand corner, you could see this is what the notifications would look like. All right. And as I start changing these colors, let's make it like red and switch it. You can see it immediately gives you that feedback and see, you could see what it is that you're coloring there. And that way that translates over to the JSON file that you could then import. And then you could tweak it even more from VS code itself. While themes.vscode.one is a great tool to get things off the ground, it won't get your theme to a finished solution. You'll find it doesn't cover everything you'd like to style, or it might be missing even some newer features that have come out in the latest VS Code updates. So let me show you how you can close this gap. All right, so back in VS Code, we have the extension running. In case you stopped it, you can restart it again by either pressing F5 on your keyboard or pressing the play button in this debug view. And then having it open side by side is super helpful. So I'm gonna close this so I can see all of my JSON file for the theme that I have. And on the right-hand side, I can see the output of the changes there. All right, so to figure out how to close this gap with the UI that you want to change colors for. Uh, the way you can do that is by actually opening up the developer tools like you would in a browser. So you open up the extension hose while you're that's your focus area. You press control shift I or command shift I on Mac OS, and that'll bring up the developer tools. And then I like to put that to the side with this. And then you just like you would with an HTML web page and you want to select the right element there. You click on that little icon in the top left 
which is the select element. The keyboard shortcut for that, for me at least, is Control Shift C. So once you have that icon clicked, anywhere you hover over inside of the extension host of VS Code will highlight that component for you and jump to that within the HTML on the left-hand side there. So let's say I wanted to style this menu bar icon, for instance. Well, I can click on that and I could see that exact element in the HTML and see the style that's being applied to it within this view here in the developer tools. So in this case, the color is coming from this CSS variable, VS Code title bar inactive foreground. Now this gives you a hint as to what setting to use in the JSON for your theme to color that. Another way you could take this a bit further is when you click on it, you get the color like that in hex format, copy it, and then come back to your instance of VS Code, the one that's running the extension host. And once you're back in here, you can do a Control F to find and paste it in there. And you could see all the different settings that are using that color and find the right one. Or based on what we saw before, we can search if that setting is already there. It was inactive, it was inactive foreground, right? And I could find all instances of that. Title bar, inactive foreground. Panel title, inactive foreground. Tab. And that's about it. So it's probably this title one since it correlates to that right, that same hex color code that we had before. So now if I change this to, let's say red, save that, you can see, there it is, it changed to red. And that's how you can go about closing that gap for what VS Code themes that one tool provides to give you that jump start, but get more intricate details on the various UI components in VS Code. Now this has mostly been focused on visual UI components of VS Code the workbench colors as they're called. But we also need to theme the code and other text that gets displayed when working on a project. These are covered by what's called syntax colors and styles. This can get quite involved. So for now, we're going to do a high level overview on this. But if you want me to go more in depth on this, leave a comment below. Again, a quick way to get started with this is using the themes.vscode.one tool that exports out the one that lets you highlight the syntax that you want to control the color of keywords, variables, that type of thing, and see that in action and then export it into your own extension. But then from there, that will show up as the token colors key in your JSON file. What's key to defining the colors for the different syntax and tokens that are being used and displayed in the text within Visual Studio Code is what's called the scope field here for each set of entities that you might use or token group. And so how do you find these out so that you can know what's the right one to use and what color you want to set that to? Well, let me show you how to do that. When you open up the extension host here or the extension development host, you can bring up what's called the command palette for one, and then search for developer inspect editor tokens. And you choose that option. And what happens is it shows this little pop-up now. And then it tells you the type of language that of the context that you're currently looking within. The standard token type is other, the current coloring for it which in this case, I want to get rid of like, you can see the red doesn't match my theming right now. Why is it showing up as red? I don't know. We've got to figure that out. But this is where these things called TextMate scopes come into play. Again, this is a very high level overview, but if I wanted to change this now, I would copy these scopes or the specific one in this case for the current context I'm working within. So in this case, we are dictionary value JSON comments. I don't know why it would be comments right now, but let's leave it like that. Or wait, where did I click on? Right here. I want that. All right, let's say it's this semicolon here. Punctuation separated dictionary key value JSON comment. So if I go here and I add a new object in here, make sure you put a comma after it, give it a name of just test for now, and then scope, which is gonna be an array. And in there, we're gonna put it and give it the scope of that. Then if I wanna set the color of that, I go to settings, and I could say foreground, you could change the font style if you'd like of that and the color of it. So let's say instead of red, we go blue and bold. And now you could see, well, you can't see. Let's make it green actually so you can see. Now you can see that the semicolon there is indeed green and showing up. So I was able to successfully find and identify this particular piece of syntax within the JSON type of context file and stylize it the way I want. Now this gets really tedious. So again, if you want a more in-depth overview of this, make sure to leave a comment below to let us know. We'll work on a video for that too. Once you've tweaked everything to your liking and you've tested it all out in the output from the extension host, your theme is all set to start using. If you wanna know how to publish it to the VS Code Marketplace, you can learn more about that in our next video, how to publish a VS Code extension. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with a colleague who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy secure coding everyone.